Hello friends, look here. This is what I've made today. It's a 3D printed gamepad with digital switches. Listen to the sound. It's the Cherry MX Blue of the gamepad world. So satisfying. So this is a gamepad for any game that has Bluetooth. So you can use it with your PC, Mac, your phones and the Nintendo Switch. And the sticks are in fact digital. They're modeled after those arcade sticks that you have in fighting games. And indeed, I've made this for fighting games. I've made this for one game only, and that's Super Smash Brothers Special. So there's two things that are really cool about it. The first is that I've designed this ergonomic shape that goes perfectly in your hands from scratch in Fusion. And I'll show you how to make this sort of round ergonomic organic shapes later. And the second thing is that these sticks are actually very miniature versions of the mechanism you find in arcade coin operated games, especially for fighting games. So here's the stick from the Japanese version of Masters of Teras Kasi. I know that you've played with one of these. It's got this very crunchy, digital, precise, but rugged feeling that gives you perfect control over your combos in this sort of game. Maybe you haven't seen how these work, but I'm sure as soon as you open this up and look at the mechanism here, you'll understand how it works. It's super simple. It's just got four of these switches that load the stick to stay in the center and as soon as you push it in one direction one of these activates. So if you look closely that's exactly what I've done with this stick too. It's simple but it's effective. I'll show you how this thing works, how it's wired up and how it can make you better at Super Smash Brothers. So everything in this controller including the face buttons and the sticks all are based on this. It's a very small micro switch. You might ask me why these are called micro switches because they aren't even that small. I'm sure you see buttons smaller than this. But if you open one up, it'll be clear for you. So you get four of these switches, uh, print one of these frames for it and stick the switches in the frame. And the central stick is on this ball joint here. Some of these arcade joystick sticks are free to rotate around their axis and you can have it like that, but I decided to have it locked down on the rotation. So I added this little bar member here and it's actually just a piece of uh, filament. So just clip it off and now it doesn't rotate anymore. So this stick is gonna be the C stick of my Smash Brothers controller. See, just stick the stick down here and you got a C stick. So here I'm making the left hand side stick and here comes the cool part. This stick is actually a two stage digital stick. So you have two switches on either four side and each one activates in order. So you can deflect your stick just halfway to get 50% output into your game, or you can go all the way and get 100%. And you will see why this is important for some games later. So do you see the top switches are higher up, so the shaft pushes on them first. So you get the first click on your movement earlier and then only when you go all the way do you get the second click. So here's my favorite game Super Smash Brothers. And my favorite character in this game is King Dedede or as he's known in Japanese Mega Donkey. Mega Donkey is my favorite character because he's heavy and slow and he's got very strong attacks with this great big hammer that he has. However he's slow to start his attacks telegraphing them early, and the attacks are also slow to wind down or cool down. So push A and you do a little jab attack, 
can input right and A at the same time to do a smash like this and you'll use your hammer. It's a very strong attack. Let's do it on Mario. But here's something I only learned about just recently. If you deflect your sticks quite gently and then push A, you'll do something totally different from the smash and from the jab attack. This very fast spin with your hammer. So this is perfect, exactly what I've been looking for for this character, where my regular attacks are too slow to wind down and my stronger attacks are too slow to wind up. I have the perfect balance here where I have a fast spinning attack like this and it also goes upwards like this. Five years of playing this game and I never knew. But here's the difficult part. I'm not very good with my thumb dexterity, especially on my left hand thumb. You're supposed to, in the heat of battle, deflect the stick only slightly or do it slow enough and then at the same time do A. And that's something I just can't do reliably in the heat of battle. So I don't want to be the guy to say, oh, I meant to do the different attack, but the controller didn't do what I asked it to. So the only solution that I could see is to make my own controller who will always work as I want it to do. So now you're starting to see why I'm doing these two stage digital sticks. With this, you get perfect feedback. You know after the first click, which you can hear and you can feel it in your fingers that you're only inputting half stick. And it, when you want to go full stick, you just jam the stick all the way. To make the regular attacks, you just push A. To make the smash attacks, you flick and do A. And to do the strong attack between those, the one that I have been missing, you deflect to the first detent and push A. It couldn't be easier. It's super repeatable and reliable. Works every time. To see how I would fare with the new controller, I challenged my friend Ese to a match. Three lives against three. <laughs> He's playing Terry, a very fast fighting game style character. Right away you can see he's not expecting my spinning hammer attack because it's something I've never been able to do before. I'm even able to juggle him a little bit with my up strong attack. But his character is fast and my character remains slow. He's quickly learning new patterns and ways to get around my spinning hammer attack by attacking from the sky. I try and use all my four types of attack, normal, strong, smash and special to keep my actions unpredictable and varied. I make a bad mistake. This is character Terry has a special ability where when his damage goes over 100%, his attacks become doubly effective. Now I'm down to one life and I'm full of damage. Here, a lucky break. A smash ball which grants me one special attack lands right in front of my great big hammer. If I can only make this attack land. And there it is. I'm able to send Ace to the donkey dimension and take the win. I'm not sure how much of that was due to the new controller, but at least the clickety sounds of the micro switches must have had a psychological impact on Ace's play. We played more the next day and I was able to get. 5% more wins over him than before. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make your own custom controllers. The point is not for you to make this exact controller. I want to show you how you can make your own custom controllers that will fit all your needs, your hands and the game that you want to play. You could just take the stick assembly from this and make something completely different with it. Why don't you make a little arcade stand? Or take the shape of the controller that I made, I think it's quite nice and ergonomic, and put your own buttons and switches on it. First, the electronics. So to make a custom controller, you basically have two choices. You can 
get your own microcontroller, so an Arduino board or a Teensy. Wire all your switches to it and put in a firmware sketch to communicate with the computer. That's exactly what this is, right? The second way to do it, and what I've done here, is just get a cheap controller and just remove the hardware and replace it with your own. So this device actually houses inside of it a knockoff third-party Switch Pro controller. This thing was not expensive on Amazon. I was expecting it to feel mushy and bad, but actually it's like 90% as good as a real thing. Perhaps the dead zones on this stick are quite large, but the buttons feel okay and it's, well, it's good enough to play. But unfortunately I need it for parts for my even better controller, so a part it must come. Screw it open and you'll reveal the surprisingly simple PCB inside. Everything is on this PCB and this one microcontroller chip is probably dictating the whole show. Perhaps the second chip is for the Bluetooth connectivity. So how does a button on a controller work? Just take a look at these pads that were under the button here. You can see these gray pads are covered with some sort of graphene. It's probably the same thing that you have on your pencil basically. And that might as well be because they then have a lead going from one side of the button all the way to the microcontroller, one of the pins on the microcontroller. That's why it's called a pencil lead. And somehow the microcontroller is able from within know when these two pads are shorted together. So when the button pushes down on them, the dark bit on the rubbery bit connects these two. Well, our micro switch is exactly the same thing. It's just connecting the two isolated metallic pins together electronically when you push on it. So if you can take a wire from each side of these dark pads to two sides of the micro switch, then you can make pushing that micro switch push down on that button. It's all the same to the game controller. And They've actually even made it easier for us. You don't have to scrape away this dark material and solder onto these pads because look behind, there's actually these silvery circles that all have labels for the different buttons, A, B, X, Y, up, down. And these are actually test pads. So in the factory, a uh, matrix robot comes down on this PCB and test if everything's working okay. But you can take advantage of these. So just solder your wires right onto these and connect your micro switches to those wires. The analog sticks are a bit different. So what an analog stick is, is just two potentiometers, which both form a voltage divider. So one end is connected to ground and one is connected to plus of the battery. And depending on how much you're deflecting your stick, the voltage that's coming to the third lead is either going closer to ground or, or closer to the plus side. To make this into a digital stick, what you can do is make your own voltage divider with just two resistors like this. So do you see I have the ground and the VCC, so that's, that's the plus side, and I've put two resistors of 5k ohms on both sides, and when I connect the X lead to the middle point between these, then the stick will report exactly neutral because it's getting halfway of the voltage between those two. You can short selectively one side of this voltage divider to get either something very close to ground or something very close to plus. So that's what I'm doing with these two switches. Some of you might have noticed that there is a chance that you might push down on both switches at the same time and then you would short your battery. So to prevent that, I've added in these safety resistors here, which are about 200 ohms. They don't change the reading, but they make it a bit more safe to use. And finally, here's the piece de resistance. The resistor array that I've used to get two-stage digital control. Where in the neutral position, you still have this 5K, 5K divider where you get the middle voltage to your stick. But one set of switches short 
your sensing pin to the ground or the plus and the second set of switches don't short it directly to ground but only short it through a second quite large resistor which results in the output voltage being only halfway to either ground or the plus side. The digital buttons themselves are much easier so all of them just have one of these micro switches in there If you want to be super fancy, you could use these Omron switches that are meant for mouses. Mice. They are meant for mice. They sound just like a mouse click. Why are all the grounds to just any one ground you find on the controller PCB? And each digital switch goes to its nicely labeled individual pad here. To mount these switches to the stick assembly, I'm actually using just a little piece of filament in each of these holes. So sharpen it up, feed it through and then clip the rest off. Once you're done, just try and fit everything in there. Use a bit of tape or glue, especially with these extra wires. Sweep it all there under the rug, snap it closed and you're ready to go and test and see if it works. Part 2. Here's the second cool thing. I designed this controller shape to fit my hands perfectly. But I think it's a really good design so it'll probably fit your hands too. To make a organic round shape like this in Fusion, there's a few tricks. Firstly, you should only design half of it because you can just mirror it for the left side unless you have different size hands or something So how I've done it here in this just make a very rough shape It's basically a box for the main body and another box for the handle and Then cut out some strategic corners here and there and add a ton of fillets See I knew that this is gonna be a sort of cylinder. So I made it a Pentagon shape almost here and then filleted all these edges to make a round shape where I knew that this shape that's not in my palm is going to be the sharpest corner so it's almost like a teardrop shape where the face fitting in my palm is going to be the roundest and nicest and most ergonomic and then from that cylinder or that teardrop extrusion I round up the end finally and then go into all these joints and corners you have and round everything off until you get a very nice and ergonomic shape. And you wouldn't know from the final product that it's not a sculpted shape and instead a, a procedurally or, or should I say solid design. I had to make a few iterations of this. So the first one uh, that I made looked great on screen. Only thing is it was way too big, look. <laughs> And the second one I made was more based on the PlayStation shape, but I found these round handles were not nice at all to hold on to. So I changed the shape again, this time more like an Xbox one. After playing around with these angles, I arrived at something like this, but this time the sticks were not fat and round, but too thin and too sharp this time. So going back, I finally arrived at something like this, where I ran out of filament, I had to change the color at the middle point. And I knew that this was the perfect shape, it fit my hands perfectly. This is great because I'm going to be using this shape later for a different product as well. Here's one thing that you can't get with injection molding that you can with 3D printing, is these handles are actually completely seamless. You can see the gray part is one part and the black is another so the black is completely seamless here so there's no seam that you can feel when you're holding on to your controller this is thanks to the controller being printed upright like this standing from the shoulders of it so to say looks like I better go and change the filament for this These devils have a defense mechanism where if you kill one of them, they smell horrible. That's the worst self-defense mechanism. If you want to make your own controller, and I recommend you try it, 
what you can actually do is print one of these blank ones just hold on to it see if the size fits you if you want to make modifications and for the button layout itself if you're making a custom one you can just play around with your thumbs and put down with the marker where you want those holes and buttons to be to open up the holes you can do the star wars thing like this that will hold them They are still coming through! This is impossible! Where are those droid cars? Or uh, just uh, go and open those holes in the CAD software like I did. The digital buttons that I made, I first experimented with a round button like most of your controllers would have but here's a limitation of 3d printing like i've talked about before the round shapes have to be printed upwards and they end up having layer lines in a very unfortunate direction where they can hang up like this but i changed the design to be printable sideways like this which ended up being a rectangular button here the layer lines work in our favor and let the button slide much better. So this controller is very modular. All the buttons and the sticks are surface plate mount like this. So you can just open up the required hole size and slide all these sticks and buttons in wherever you like to have them. So how do you like it? Do you like my custom Smash Brothers Bluetooth 3D printed gamepad controller? I really don't mean for you to make one of these yourself unless you are enough of a fan of Smash Brothers to really appreciate a custom controller for that game but not enough of a fan to have already mastered the very delicate analog control that comes with the game unlike I have but I think the arcade stick mechanism here is pretty cool you could especially take the digital one with only one stage and use that for your own projects and something like this, you know. And the surface mount buttons too. I think they have really nice response and nice sound. You could take these two things and use them for something else that you're making yourself. Secondly, the controller shape itself. I'm gonna upload just the blank shell of this controller. So if you want to use your lightsaber and open up some holes in that, mount your own things, and make your own custom controller, you can do that because I think it's a pretty good shape. And thirdly, I hope I've shown you an easy and cheap way to make a wireless controller by harvesting the organs from a very cheap third-party controller. And you don't have to search out the specific third-party controller that I used. Basically all uh, first-party and third-party controllers will be modifiable in the same way. So just take the PCB out, figure out the wiring and solder everything together. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.